Welcome to Electric Dreams, your regular podcast about electric vehicles, sustainable tech and news. Brought to you by the Yorkshire EV Club, now with a new website at yorkshireevclub.co.uk. Welcome to episode three. My name is Darren. My name is John. And we've been very, very busy, folks. We have, we have, yes. Do you want to tell everybody? Yeah, well, we've got a new website up and running, which is yorkshireevclub.co.uk. Yes, there's not a great deal on it at the moment, but there is uh, obviously a link to this this here podcast. You probably downloaded it from there. Uh, Or... You may have downloaded or you might be listening to our podcast on Spotify. Yeah, we're now on Spotify, folks. So exciting times. It's official. We are now officially a podcast, not just a few links on a website. Brilliant. More soon to follow. We'll be, we'll be getting on Apple and Google just as soon as we get around to it. So bear with us, folks. So instead of be waffling, you're going to want it to hear some uh, EV-related goodness or some te- sustainable tech-related goodness. So let's launch right into it. Right, folks, I'm sorry about this, and it's just about time we tackle this. I'm going to say the F word. Yeah, I'm, I swore last time I said self-charging hybrid. <laughs> You've done it again. Oh, bleep that out, John. <laughs> There's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. Copyright Martin Lee. Hello, Martin. <laughs> so, I'm in a ranty mood, folks, and, you know, anyone that knows me knows that, well, any, any time there's a why in the day, I like a good rant. Um, but... When I say this F word, all of you EV fans and reasonable, nice people are going to uh, nod in agreement when I say no fracking way. Mm. Yeah, very topical recently, very topical. So, yet again, uh, fracking has caused an issue. And and the reason I want to bring fracking to this podcast is, is basically that we want to talk about the future of things. We want to talk about positive things that don't have an impact on the planet. That's what, um, you know, being an EV driver is about. And that's, I mean, you know, one of the things is it's having a sense of social responsibility. Um, and I just think that fracking is an outmoded way of getting energy when we're in the windiest country in Europe. Uh, we get we can get free energy from the sun and we have, we have means of storing it that have a less dangerous impact on the planet. So, yeah, I just just wanted to just touch on the whole fracking thing. Yeah, it's 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 which it's, it's weird in that um, you would you would have think that they yeah people would learn from this kind of thing. But but anyway, I'm not going to insult people's intelligence and all that kind of stuff. But um, but uh, those of you who who, are, who know us quite well will know that the reason why there's been a little bit of a wait for this podcast is I've been away. Uh, I've been in the south of France, and needless to say, down there. Um, they haven't got much English news over there, being deep in the French countryside. So long story short, I've come back here, and literally in the last couple of hours, Darren's, um, Darren's mentioned, oh, yeah, they, that second tremor. What second tremor? I didn't know that there was a second tremor uh, in Lancashire around this, uh, this same fracking um, site, I guess. Uh, plant site? But, yeah. I, yeah, the, the, well, whatever you call it, yeah. yeah I mean, Abomination. It, y- yes, yeah, you could, you could easily use that word, in, in my opinion. But, yeah, it's, it's the fact that they... The uh, the the problem has happened here. Yeah, there's been a little. Uh, it doesn't matter how minor. There, there was a, there was a tremor. There was a little. They call it an earthquake. That's exactly what it is. Just a small one. But the fact that it's happened again at the same site is a, f- a few bells should be ringing in the in the background yeah, so of the people that run the site. This really. is again and, and again. It's the company called Quadrilla's mm. site, and you know, it's not as if fracking's new. It's been around a long time in America, and you know. It has been sort of, I'll never use the word proven, but there are those that believe it's poisoned the water table in parts of the states. Yeah, there there are about a hundred different possible, I'll say a hundred, but lots of different possible ideas as as to why it's it's potentially damaging the uh, the environment, the atmosphere and all this kind of stuff. But uh, but it seems it's slightly more than coincidental now. This, This is the thing where, okay, I'm not a scientist, but if you see something happening as a result of something else, potentially, and then you do the same thing again, and then the same reaction happens again, you'd think there's a pattern emerging here. And I'm, again, I'm no scientist, but this, it's, it's happening more and, and more and more, and it's just a case of, ah, it's all right, it's just a little tremor. Yeah, we might have caused it, but it's not doing any damage. Or, yeah, oh no, it's nothing to do with us. And it seems to be every time, from what I've seen, reading the news, or I'll say just, just 
been aware of the news for the last few years is that every time there is um, uh, a potential fracking incident, tremor, whatever you want to call it, it always seems to be, oh, there's a different excuse every time. It doesn't matter how loosely related, yeah. oh, it's not us, yeah. or from not from it, excuses ranging from it's not us to it's not important or it's not doing any damage. But it's still cause and effect, and it's still the same thing and every it's all, time. It's almost like that... Uh, that they, they were, you know, they've all they've all said and they've all tried to approach this from a crafty perspective. Well, oh, and they're just drilling for the possibility of shale gas. No, <laughs> we only want a license to see what's there. Well, yeah, and if you find a big deposit of shale gas, you're going to crack on. And mm. it's um, I can't I can't imagine the either the governments or councils or whoever gives permission gives these licenses. I can't imagine them saying, "Oh, you've you've found loads of uh, loads of gas down there." No, we don't. You dig in there. They're well, not going to say that, are they? Well, you your listeners are an educated lot, so I'd love to know for next time. But uh, if this is true, and I heard that uh, when David Cameron was you know divvying up uh, the right for people to apply for fracking licenses, he left out one place, which was. Uh, Whitney in Oxfordshire, which just happened to be his home county. Mm, and, uh, I, I think the word NIMBY is coming to mind. So, so does, that, does that kind of tell you what his, <laughs> his real opinion is? on it? Anyway, I'm not going to get into politics. We're not about politics. No, no, it's not about politics. But at the same time, it's, it, it speaks volumes, the, the actual uh, the events that have happened and also the, uh, you know, the, the, the coincidences. Let's just say that. So let, let's just make a point. Like I say, we don't have many earthquakes in this country, but... To fracking was stopped by the Oil and Gas Authority after a 2.9 magnitude earthquake was reported. Um, you can't make this up, folks. This is a damaging, dangerous thing. I'm going to finish this subject and this little rant um, and call for reason, if you like, by saying that if you listen to this on Spotify, there's a great songwriter who's got a political heart of gold called David Rovix, and he's written a song called No Fracking Way. Listen to it, share it. If you agree with the politics, get that song out there because he's got it bang on. Anyway, that's that's it on the fracking. I think we're, <laughs> we're going to close it and move to something a bit more fun. For those of you who obviously can't see, as being an audio-based podcast, I'm waving at him. That'll do. That'll do. Anyway, I think yeah, it's about time for the for the jacket with the arms behind. Anyway, see you momentarily. Right, Darren's had a couple of moments just to, uh, to, to sit and calm down for a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about cars, surprisingly enough, uh, electric ones. Uh, yeah, um, obviously being that I'm not yet an electric car driver and I'm trying very hard to become one, obviously I've been looking around and I've noticed there's a new, a new Corsa, uh, Vauxhall Corsa. They call it the Corsa E. You'll never guess why. Yes, it's an electric one. Um, the, the Vauxhall Corsa E is, uh, I think it's the first um, zero emission uh, Vauxhall car, isn't it? Am, am I right in that? Obviously, they've, they've had the to, the... to the best of my knowledge, yes. Yeah, there, there was the other car, which was... Was it the, the Ampero, which I think was was a half electric, but yeah, with, a, and, yeah, with a petrol engine. And heralded by all that have driven it, by the way, is a fantastic car. The, the Ampero. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, I, I, did, I did see one when it's EVs uh, in the park a couple of years ago. I didn't make it to the most recent one. But uh, but anyway, we'll talk about it later. Um, yes, the, the, the Corsair look, looks pretty decent, to be fair. Um, the... Uh, the it, well, it... Look, read, reading some of the, the spec about it without boring you all to death, uh, you can always look it up if you want to. Uh, 205 miles WLTP range. Um, uh, apparently you can get about 40% more if you drive the car in eco mode, uh, according to what I'm reading here. Um, that's not bad. That, that, that's quite a claim about eco mode. 40% is quite a big figure, to There's be fair. There's only one problem with eco mode. Yeah. It's boring, isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I currently drive my uh, my mild hybrid everywhere in eco mode, and I'm so used to driving slow. When I put it in sports mode, it's you know it's five minutes of fun, and then I'm back to reality. I'll tell you when I use eco, <laughs> eco mode. I use eco mode when the choice is eco mode or break down at the roadside. Yeah, fair point, fair point. <laughs> but that will depend on the car you're driving. But um, I, I don't know whether this course is going to be like uh, like that or not. Main reason being, uh, car car people are going to know it's no longer uh, Vauxhall, Opel, uh, whatever you want to call them, is not uh, a General Motors company anymore. It was bought by the French, by uh, PSA, a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Ah, the French. Same people that own the uh, um, Peugeot and Citroën brands, and DS, obviously being a, a branch of Citroen. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah, it, 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 seems, it seems quite good, to be fair. It, you know, it looks nice and the specs are right. But, but just talking specifically about the looks for the minute, um, 
they, they say that the rear axle has been developed specifically for the Corsa E, so you can recognise it. Um, it looks like an ordinary car, I'll give you that. Uh, it makes it very identifiable between the electric Corsa and the, uh, the ICE Corsa, internal combustion engine, for those uninitiated. But... We, we were talking about this before we came on to air. Yeah, we had we, a good Darren? old look at, didn't we, at uh, all, all, all aspects of it, you know. And it, yeah, it looks like a little bit, to me, this is just to me, but it looks like a bit of a melange, if I'm going to use a, a French word, of three different cars all crammed into one. If you look at the Peugeot, um, sorry, if you look straight towards the back of the, um, of the Corsa E, it looks a bit like a Peugeot. You know, they're, they're quite wide and rounded on the sides. You look at it from other angles, um, it, from the front rather, from the front side, it looks like the front of a Mercedes. Yeah, from, I mean, as soon as I saw it from the side, I thought, what does that remind me of? And also, partially from one angle from the front, I thought, it looks like an A3. Yeah. And that door, the door design in particular... It does look very similar. It's got the, it's almost like a, a stripe down the side with like a, a Nike tick at the end of it. If, if I, yeah, I can't think of how to describe if it. If you guys and girls have a look at the A3 and you'll see what we mean. Mm. But it, it also looks like um, very, very slightly uh, hinting to like the Renault Megane. Do, do you remember the Renault Megane's, uh, I think it was the late 90s, early 2000s, the one with the, the big fat backside? And the one with the uh, shaking their ass. I was going oh, yeah, yeah. to say, yes, if, yeah. you know, if you know the advert, yeah. you know the car. But yeah, I mean, that's, that, it's, all, it's like a very tiny bum on a Renault Megane just put on a Corsa with the mixture of the Peugeot look and the Mercedes. And, but... It's a nice looking car. So now then, bearing in mind that uh, if you remember in ep- uh, episode two, I joked about driving my leaf up to a bunch of race boys in town and who, <laughs> who would be driving courses. A couple of courses, yeah. So then, if this is a Corsa, uh, and let's say that, okay, that these race boys are, are you know, they're, they're fairly well off, they can afford an EV. Mm-hmm. Um, let, you know, what kind of bang for their buck are they going to get? John, what kind of acceleration? Uh, it, what, in their standard Corsa or in the electric oh, No, in, in the electric Corsa. Um, well, it's, it's a, good, a loaded question I see there. Yes, I've got it written down in front of me. Uh, it can accelerate from 0 to 31 miles per hour, not uh, to 50 k's, in 2.8 seconds, um, reaching 62 miles an hour, 100 k, in uh, 8.1 seconds. Now... Well, that knocks about five seconds off my leaf. Well, I was about to say, I've got to be honest, I haven't the foggiest what any of that means. I, well, I, I do, but I have no concept of acceleration time. I've never driven properly uh, a car with any decent amount of power for more than five minutes. So it's, it looks nice, but I've got, I've got no concept. What, is that good or is that bad? Well, bearing in mind it's going to be standard production, I think that's pretty rapid. I mean, I'm, I'm like you, really. I've, a, I've, I've never owned any performance car, but... I think, if memory serves, my Leaf's about 11 to 13 seconds, 0 to 60, which it feels pretty rapid when I'm doing it. But 0 <laughs> to 31 in 2.8, that's pretty good. Doesn't look bad when you compare it to that. Doesn't and and when all. you look at it, it looks like a nimble little car, doesn't it? I, I like it, I must admit. Um, I, I've, got, I've got to admit, a bit of a... Um, a, bit of a, uh, a bit of disclosure. Uh, I, I'm a fan of Peugeots. I think they look nice. You know, I don't know why. There's something about the design of it. You know, they 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 all look really nice. I mean, I could talk about the E208 one day, but uh, but but um, uh, inc- incidentally, by the way, uh, the uh, uh, reading from here, I think fully charged. Um, we're talking about it. One of their notes is that the the underpinnings of this car are very similar to the Peugeot E208, which kind of makes sense. That's probably why I've I've I, I like the look of it. But I like I like the Peugeot design, and there's a, there's evidently a little bit of PSA design in there as well as the original Vauxhall Opel Corsa. So and looking yeah. at that range, John, what did you always say that you if you could get to Essex in it, that then then it's game on. Yeah, if I can if I can drive 220 miles without having to stop halfway, um, then yeah, I, I'd be happy. Well, you've got 205 miles there plus 40 percent if you drive like a granny. <laughs> yeah, it it shows that I am. Every day, getting very, very close to buying an EV. Of course, when it gets to that point, I guarantee you the next limiting factor is going to be money. But anyway, that's that. That's nothing. That's no criticism of the cars or other technology because this is getting better every day. Well, I tell you what, John, I'll make you a promise right now, mm-hmm. on air, as it were. If you buy an e Corsa, I'll buy you the baseball car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on then, you might have told you that one. We've got it recorded now anyway, so there we go. Uh, but it'll be a fully charged baseball cap. 
that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I mean, yeah, OK. I, I have a lot of baseball caps anyway, to be fair, but I don't actually have any electric ones. I've got a lot of, ah. for, a lot of Formula One related merchandise. I've got um, the, uh, the Caterham and the... Um, uh, Caterham, Honda, uh, Super Aguri hats and um, Lotus Racing and all this kind of stuff. But I haven't got any electric-related headwear. There you go. So if anyone wants to send us any free electric-related <laughs> headwear, <laughs> then by all means, we are open to bribery and Who we'll give you, you a mention. You Who do you think you are? Our 30 subscribers or whatever it is at the moment, <laughs> I'm sure, will be rushing in, sending us headwear. No, but in all seriousness, if there is anyone else who actually has a vast collection of uh, electric-related uh, headwear, you know, you don't have to send it to us. Just take a photograph. Let us know. Let <laughs> us know what's out there, or at least let me know anyway. Uh, I don't know. Darren's not a, uh, he's not a baseball cap-wearing kind of guy. I'm more of a flat cap wearing kind of guy, hence the Yorkshire V Club. Mm. Yes, short arms, deep pockets. Absolutely. It would be remiss of me not to mention EVs in the park. Uh, we're recording this the uh, week after I attended EVs in the park. Mm. Uh, John, as he's already mentioned, unfortunately was in France. Shame, shame. Uh, but, you know, he had a lovely holiday with his family, no one could begrudge him that. And uh, I sat with a bunch of other EV clubs, um, and I'm going to name check people, um, Leanne and Neil, John Chivers, um, we met Craig, we saw Martin Lee, EV Nick, lots and lots of people, George from Lynx EVs, lots and lots of really nice people, I sat eating vegan cake for most of the day, minding my own business and just eating vegan cake. Um, it was an amazing car there, John. Um, I don't know if I sh- did. I show you the picture of the guy with the chitty chitty bang bang car. <laughs> uh, yes, you did. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was in. I was in the middle of France, and I received this picture. I, I couldn't remember. I couldn't work out in my uh, in, in my, um, my my short. Oh, surprise of get, receiving the picture. I couldn't work out whether it was chitty chitty bang bang or whether it was the. Um, uh, whether it was Dick Dastardly's from Wacky Races. I don't know why. For some reason, I had a bit of a brain block. I couldn't work out which one it was. But, yeah, it looked amazing. So it, it looked like a beautiful This put chap, together, just, oh. if you looked up the word eccentric in the dictionary, there'd be a picture <laughs> of him with his home-built EV. He'd got a bubble blower on the back, and it was just the very epitome of fun. It looked brilliant. Oh, I only saw the photographs. I didn't see. I didn't realize there was a bubble machine on the back. Yeah, Sold. absolutely. Yeah, and he said. He said when I drive down the road, I said that these things go for miles. <laughs> uh, but great day. The weather was there. Over two hundred and thirty EVs. I'm reliably told. Good effort. Good effort. Um, yeah. It's just a great day, and uh, the real sense of community with a large C. It really was great. Yeah, it, I mean, I noticed that last year when I was the the uh, the, the year before. I mean. You've got your, your mil- millions, you've got loads of different types of people turning up for different reasons. You get the locals who are just walking their dogs and going, oh, there's a bunch of cars, let's go and have a look. You get the, the hardcore EV fanatics that bring the cars in to show off the cars and look, isn't EV great? And then you get the guys who are, who are like me. Um, I, I'd like to say I'm, I'm a bit more than EV curious. You know, I'm, 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 well, I'm well into the, into the scene, but there are people that go there out of interest. And then you get people that just think, oh, yeah, go on, let's just see what it's all about. It's, it's amazing. But everybody is all brought together on, on the one topic of, of EVs. So it doesn't matter whether you're there as a fanatic or whether you're there out of interest. There's always someone to talk with. That's what I noticed when I was you know, there. And I, I think I have a hard time travelling from Hull to anywhere because I've, <laughs> I've got to travel 60 miles from even on the M1. But uh, <laughs> the funny thing was, there was a guy there in his Model 3 who'd come all the way from Belgium. From Belgium? Yes. Good grief, I had no idea. Yeah, so it's, it was, really was. You know, and, you know, to see so many varied EVs and uh, everyone just having fun and chatting. There was sponsors there, like I say. It was, uh, it was just a, a fabulous day. Uh, the funniest thing for me is when I turned up, I just, there were lots of disgruntled park runners because the park run had been cancelled. Was it because of the EV event, <laughs> or was I, that just I, coincidental? I'm being unfair. I'm being a bit <laughs> flippant, a bit of a joke, really. The park runners, um, obviously, you don't, if you do the park run in the same place, you don't check the website. But there was, as all the EVs were driving in, all the runners were like, what's going on? Because, of course, they don't check the website every week. They just assume it's on, oh, you know. of course. And uh, so, of course, all these EVs coming in, all the runners going around us, like, sort of having a look at it, saying, what are these guys doing, you know? <laughs> F- filling the field full of cars. 
Oh, but, wow. No, it was a great event. And yet again, you know, Craig did brilliantly. Uh, he got he got an award from, from Paul Middlecott. And uh, I said I'd say hi to Paul on the next podcast because we had a good chat. And uh, he, he won a great event at Gaydon. They also talked about and uh, a sense of community really strong. I came away feeling really positive for the future of the whole the whole sh- shebang really and uh, that that can link us a little bit to you know a, a couple of negatives I think so I'll just um <laughs> just you know just we'll just hit on a couple of the things that I just wanted to talk about um especially after my rant and frack, fracking and yet I have had my little my meds now so I promise to behave he's calmed down a bit it's all right so at EVs in the park saw a lovely chap called Simon Rowe who's one of the guys uh along with Gary Comerford, I think it is, who do um, the fantastic EV Musings podcast. Uh, and they're very professional. They know what they're doing. They, they, they put out brilliant content. I'd, I'd urge you to listen to them. And he's uh, Simon is a, a big fan of um, electric skateboarding. Nice. And he had his skateboard, and I, I badgered him. I said, can I have a go for the days? I said, yeah, of course you can. I, are you a skateboarder? No. Oh. Um, but oh, I just wanted to go. <laughs> And uh, I did, by the way, I did have a go at uh, Nick, EV Nick's uh, electric scooter. That was great fun. Oh, brilliant. Uh, only briefly, because, but anyway, the nub of it is I bottled it. I didn't badger Simon to, to have a go at, in the air. I just thought, I'll just break my neck and it'll spoil the day. So I didn't. No. I just sat, <laughs> sat looking at it thinking, oh, yeah. anyway. Free so wise, we got wise. talking, we got <laughs> chatting, me and Simon, about, um, about, about the recent events and basically the crackdown that's been on with people with... You know, electric skateboards, electric scooters, and basically following a, a, a terrible tragedy, we won't really go into too much, um, on an electric scooter. And the, the police you know, basically pull, were pulling people uh, and fining them and, and, and giving them points on the licenses if they're on the road on them, you know. It's, 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 it's mad, isn't it? It's weird how, again, this is something we were talking about off air, but it, it's, it seems to be... Uh, like a lot of things, really. I mean, something brand new comes along. The law doesn't really know how to handle, either restrict or or to enhance uh, the use of this particular whatever it is that's new. In this case, it's it's electric scooters. It's, now, it seems that technology is quick, but the law is very slow to catch up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to, to you and I, the electric skateboards and the electric scooters. To me, when when I think of scooter scooters, I think of the little the little pedal ones that the kids use. You know, one foot on and you push your way forward, that kind of thing. They don't need a license to use that. But being that it has a self-propelled motor in it, I guess technically that's where it, what makes it a motor vehicle. Hence, why you need you your know, license, it, isn't well, it? Yeah. If you took one look at Simon on, on Saturday, a classic example. He'd got a helmet on. He'd got uh, he'd got elbow pads. He'd got uh, knee pads. The guy couldn't have taken it more seriously. He was not some flippant guy. And he's not the kind of person who would be weaving in and out, knocking small kids over his gut. This guy has obviously taken safety seriously and takes other people's safety seriously. And yet, his passion, he cannot just ride where he wants. It's a shame, isn't it? But if it was if it was push-powered, pedal-powered, foot-powered, whatever you want to call it, yeah, it'd be a different story. And you look at big cities like London, I mean... I, I walked around London with a friend last October, and uh, according to my Fitbit, probably the most steps I've ever walked in a day. I, we must <laughs> have walked 15 miles, and, and I'm not far off exaggerating there either. <laughs> and, um, you know, no wonder people want these last mile commute. A big place like Hyde Park, there's enough room for all, you know, and it's, I just think, you know, we need to catch up in this country. We're so archaic in some ways. You look at other countries. Yeah, it, well, it, well, it's weird. You get some countries where the law is, I hate using the word, really. It sounds political, but it's not. But you, you get some, some countries' um, um, governments and lawmakers that are so progressive, it's almost like they know what's coming, so they sort it out before it arrives. But in Britain, it's the other way around. It's, it's the, the technology is just pushing on and on and on so quickly. A lot of it British-made, you know, a lot of it not, obviously, but, but it's... it's Things are travelling at different speeds. And in Britain, when it comes to manufacturing and designing and making and building, I always find that that's rocketing on ahead and it's only the laws are catching up afterwards. So it's, I don't know, maybe, it's, maybe, maybe, it's just, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe yeah, I'm just I speaking think, from I my think, impression. Not, only, um, not are they not progressive, I find them downright retrograde sometimes. Um, when you look at the proposed solar VAT increase, I mm. know the HMRC have put it forward. I don't think it's law yet, but they're talking about um, raising the VAT for solar battery systems from five to twenty percent. 
Five to two, yeah. So bit of a jump. Okay, this <laughs> this could solve all of our energy problems. Putting these things on new build and people put them in could solve a lot of our energy problems without them having to fork out billions on new nuclear power stations. That's that's weird though. That's surely. You, you, I don't know. You, you can make like cigarettes, for example. They are bad for you. They don't want people to use them, and they put people off by putting the tax up. Solar panel. Complete, or you couldn't be further away from that. So, it's, it's, you know, it's good for the environment in that it makes no, no damage to the environment. And it's, again, it's, not a political podcast, but oh the, no, the cynic no, in no. me thinks that <laughs> who, who, who behind the scenes is put whispering in the ears of government saying, "Oh, you want to do this to solar?" I wonder who's got that much money. Oil. Sorry, <coughs> I had something in my throat. All, then are you all right? Oil. Sorry, <coughs> I don't know what's the matter. I was like, I'm, I'm fine now. <laughs> Better now. Anyway, um, so uh, that probably wraps it up for today, really. Um, other than to say, get to a local event, EV event near you. Uh, have a look on the, wherever you are in the country. I can assure you it's covered by EV groups. You contact us. We'll tell you where to find them. Yep, easy enough. And there is also uh, a Yorkshire EV event um, happening in September. There is indeed, yes. Um, on the 22nd. Uh, in Sheffield, if you get in the Yorkshire EV Club or the Twitter or anything, um, go through our website. You'll you'll get to it. It's listed on the Facebook and on the on the uh, pinned on the Twitter. So yeah, and also talking about the website, it it is there, but it's new. It's literally just a, a page saying hello, we're here. Um, here's the podcast. So what we'll try and do, or um, you know, depending on how much time we get and all that kind of stuff, we'll we'll see what we can do with the site. You never know. We might may, we might one day put a bit of content on there. But for the time being, at least, yes, even if you can't remember our Twitter or our Facebook or anything like that, just go to the website, yorkshireevclub.co.uk. I think that's right, isn't it, Darren? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. That's and it's, one. it's been a pleasure <laughs> ranting at you today. I mean, it has. So, sorry, chatting with you today. <laughs> no, no, to be fair, I think we're both right. You know, there's, a, there's, there's fun and anger in all aspects of life. It's only fair that, you know, we, we present life as it is. But, uh, and one thing I mustn't forget is to mm. thank Hall Kingston Radio again let us record on their equipment fantastic local radio station but you can also download the app and listen anywhere it's very it's very good yeah it's very good here to mention darren um, uh, yeah a uh, bit disclaimer again i work for the station but it's okay it's all right <laughs> but no yeah, you're more than welcome more than welcome free handy isn't it so <laughs> until next time sleep well and uh, and have electric dreams thanks very much see you soon everybody ta-da Whenever I hear the word quadrilla, I can't help but think of a dinosaur in roller skates.